this is a short review of this one. This is a WinPod MD2 stabilizer, electronic motorized thing. I'll just make a review, which is basically my opinion on this MD2 stabilizer. I have an XT2 camera. It's a Fujifilm. It records in 4K, so it is occupied right now by recording this video. So I'll use this camera for showing how the MD2 works. This is a 23mm Fujifilm wide-angle lens. This is an ND filter, which is adjustable, and the lens hood is from a full blend of 50mm 1.5. The reason why I use an ND filter, I've chosen my aperture, I've chosen my shutter speed, and I've chosen my uh, ISO, and those are just set. I expose with the ND filter. Of course, if I'm indoors and I lack light, I often ditch the ND filter, but it's really handy. And this little setup is quite surprisingly good at recording HD video. I've used it for my other videos, and it actually does video really well. You shouldn't think so, because it's not really aimed at video, but it is quite capable. So I'll use this one. The MD2 is pretty easy to set up. There's no app that comes with it. Uh, there's no extra settings and stuff. It's one of the fastest stabilizers I ever tried to balance the camera. Now I'll tilt the camera so you can see me do it and I'll speed it up because it's quite boring. All right, so we stabilized the gimbal like this, and uh, you often seen people do this crazy thing where they move this around to show it's stabilized. You can do it, but uh, you'll film like this and it makes no sense. What this does is that it takes out this, the really small moves that you cannot avoid if you just handheld the camera. So it's pretty stable and it works pretty well. This uh, MD2 has two modes. One is uh, that the camera continues to point in the same direction no matter how you hold it. You'll of course be able to take it up and down, but it will point in the same direction. And then you control it uh, via the joysticks where you can pan and you can tilt. It works pretty well and it works fine if you put it on a tripod or a video stand of some sort. But mostly I'd like to just walk around with it and point it in the direction that I want to film it. Because when you film some documentary stuff you don't know where people are going, you don't know how they're moving. And these joysticks and these motors are too slow to follow the action. Especially if you don't know what's going on. You can control the speed by, by this small adjusting wheel in the front. But usually you set it pretty slow because it looks really motorized if you don't do it slowly. If I push this button it is in the mode where it will look in the direction where I put it. Here's the first flaw or adjustment possibility or firmware update possibility for, for WinPod. Because if you turn it, I don't know if you can see it, it turns quite sudden. It has a, a sudden move like a... Yeah, you, you can see it here. I really wish that the WinPod will uh, reprogram uh, this and make this turn a bit more soft more like a spring uh, or feathery so it won't turn so suddenly. You don't have too much time to think about what happens when you turn the camera and I would really like the stabilizer to take the sudden movement out. That's pretty much what your gimbal is for. 
as it is right now I have to turn it pretty slowly in the beginning and then I can speed it up if I want to pan but I have to be really careful else it will make these jerky moves which is like it's like a dove it goes like this and it looks weird but it's pretty cool actually uh, there's no setup no apps no nothing it has these two modes and that's pretty much it you can get this really handheld look but with all the micro vibrations taken out so you have steady shots but it looks sort of handheld if you wanted to and if you move really carefully you can make it look really stable you can almost act like a human tripod it won't really move it'll get some life to the footage because you move a little bit up and down with it or you can stand completely still and it will stabilize for you it is great for shots where you sort of go up and down and you want to make the elevator if you want to follow something sideways or you want to pan it is pretty okay but still this jerky movement in the beginning is mm, that's it lets it down the battery life is incredible i mean i've used one pin on the back it says back here how much battery is left and i never go below this so it doesn't use too much energy it comes with the handle so you can turn it upside down like this and then you have to remember that your joysticks have switched places and you can put down this handle and you can walk with it and hold it really low it is good if you have to walk for a long stretch but uh, if you don't you probably not use it because you cannot really sit it on a table or anything if you have the handle on it but if you have it like this then you can just put it on a table like it is did and you can pan and tilt with the joysticks so you have quite a lot of options with it you can also put it on a tripod and mount a quick release plate under it it'll make it a little bit less stable on the table but it's possible to use it from a tripod i think the price is about two thousand us dollars the price in denmark where i live is about fourteen thousand corner it's quite a big investment it's it's but that's video videos all the accessories for videos are really expensive you can always get a cheap mic, but a good mic costs money. Everything that is of solid quality is expensive in the video world. I think it's because they make less of it. About the gimbal market, it's exploding right now. There's so many different solutions. And the Chinese guys are way ahead, you know, with DJI and these guys and came and there's so many other brands so it'll be interesting to see how the price goes and how the development goes for me this is quite useful i just really like when put to make an adjustment to the panning so i can pan it without the jerking that's the only thing i have with this you can walk up and down stairs and it doesn't get confused i once had a dji osmo and walking up and down stairs made it go psychotic it was just completely nuts turned all the way around and you could do nothing to make it act properly and also you have these enormous amounts of settings DJI apps uh, don't get me wrong I really love what DJI are doing and wouldn't mind a Mavic Pro but there's so many settings also for the DJI Ronin you can set up everything and it takes so long to get it to work just right and another thing with the DJI Ronin M is that you carry it up here so the bloodstream to your arms just goes away with this one you have your arms down it, it portrays uh, people really well when you have a lens at uh, chest height in my opinion this works really well it's ergonomic it's uh, nice to use it's small i can certainly see myself buying one of these but i really want Wemper to take a look at the algorithm for panning i need that to be fixed if that is fixed it's a no-brainer for me I'll investigate further. This is just the second video I made about video setups for compact cameras. So I use Fuji cameras, so it's pretty biased towards that, but you know, it is accessories. It will work with any camera like GH4, coming GH5, the Sony's and whatnot. I think that this one suffers from is the jerky movement in the beginning of a of the panning. And I really hope that Wenpot will look into this because it's the only thing I can complain about with this. Everything else works nicely. It's just the initial panning. If they just rewrote the algorithm and had an ease in, that would make it for me. Then this will be a, an absolute no-brainer for me. This is a great product, needs a little tweak. There's support for firmware updates. I haven't been able to find anywhere where these firmware updates should be available from. 
I hope that WENCOT will make that a bit more obvious on their website, but um, hopefully they'll see this video and maybe explain why the algorithm is as it is, or they might change it. I don't know. I hope they will. They're not certainly buy it, that's for sure. Compactness makes a lot of sense. And on that note, I'll show you a video I made primarily using this one. Not the camera, I used the X-T2, but I used the WENPOD M2 for all the footage. Except for two shots where I put the camera inside a refrigerator and inside a cupboard. This is not an art video, this is a test. It's about a girl who makes herself a cup of coffee and drinks it. I just had to have an excuse for making a video using this. And time is short when you borrow gear, so I had to really get moving. So it's not a fantastic storyline, but it'll show you what you can do with this MD2. I'll pan it out. 